If the natural phenomena that regularly occur at the Kaaba are considered normal and familiar to Muslims, now thoughts are not so simple anymore. It has reached Jerusalem right at the Dome of the Rock. That's right. You didn't hear wrong. Everything has become more complicated than ever as feelings of fear are covering this holy city. Rain, earthquakes, lightning, it's all happening on the Temple Mount. Do you believe that? These events brought with them terrifying speculations about the return of Christ and more specifically the signal of the rebuilding of the Third Temple. The Dome of the Rock is one of the most iconic images of the Middle East. It is undoubtedly the Dome of the Rock shimmering in the setting sun of Jerusalem. It is also considered as the wonders of world architecture, built on the site of the Temple of Solomon and the Second Jewish Temple in Jerusalem. First constructed in 691 AD, then rebuilt in 1022-23 AD. After the original dome collapsed, the dome has historically had great importance to Islamic culture. Sitting atop the Haram al-Sharif, the highest point in Old Jerusalem, the Dome of the Rock's golden-colored dome and Turkish fanes tiles dominate the cityscape of Old Jerusalem and in the 7th century served as a testament to the power of the new faith of Islam. The Dome of the Rock is one of the earliest surviving buildings from the Islamic world. This remarkable building is not a mosque as is commonly assumed and scholars still debate its original function and meaning. The dome's meaning and significance at the time of its construction was more than religious. The dome was also important to politics and culture at the time and its art was an embodiment of it. Islamic ideals all of these elements, religion, politics, culture, and art combined to make the Dome of the Rock. The symbol of the dominance of the new Islamic empire and way of life. According to legend, the Dome of the Rock is located at the site where Muhammad experienced the ascension to heaven. The rock itself, which is the central component of the building, is said to be the place where Muhammad put his foot as he began his ascent to converse with God. It is obvious that this story is an important part of the meaning of the Dome of the Rock, but it is unlikely that religion was the only driving factor in its construction. Religion was of such great importance in everyday Islamic life that politics was inevitably connected to religion and therefore played a part in the significance of the Dome of the Rock. There is a piece of shocking news that Jerusalem experienced heavy rain and the earthquake that devastated Turkey and Syria was also felt in the city. What the Dome of the Rock suffered during that terrible rain made Muslims constantly worry about this sacred site. A bolt of lightning hit the top of the dome, causing the entire land to flash. It's like a message that God wants to send to Muslims. Not only that, the earthquake at the same time brought significant threats to the safety of the dome. The ceramic tile measured approximately 20 centimeters square. The media noted similar incidents when stones fell in the interior of the Aqsa Mosque, the gray dome structure at the southern end of the Temple Mount. Stones fell from a column adjacent to the Prophet's Gate, also known as the Double Gate, one of the permanently closed gates along the southern wall. This event took place as a concrete sign for the return of Jesus. Isn't God about to return? Has God promised? Will he return to this sacred land? Earthquakes? The seismic activity that causes the Earth's surface to shake or tremble can be especially treacherous and terrifying. When the very Earth we rely on without thought suddenly betrays us and turns deadly and our whole world can come unglued. The Bible predicts a number of Earth-shattering events prior to the return of Christ. The time spoken of in the Bible is the time of the end. Worsening natural disasters are looming on the horizon. As we will see, there is a strong link between these disasters and God's warnings for people to repent of their sins. One of the signs that precedes Christ's second coming is devastating earthquakes. In the Olivet Prophecy, Jesus Christ predicted several major trends that would occur in the end times before his return. This was in response to questions from his disciples who asked, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Matthew chapter 24 verse 3 says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Listing some of these signs, Jesus said, There will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. 
the ancient prophet Isaiah issued a similar warning for the end times. In a message that applied first to ancient Jerusalem and then to Jerusalem prior to the return of Christ, the prophet said, You will be punished by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest, and the flame of devouring fire. During the day of the Lord, a time of judgment upon the nations when Christ returns, Isaiah said the people should go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth. From the terror of the Lord and the glory of His majesty when He arises to shake the earth mightily. Now that we've seen the prophecies of earthquakes and the end times, we need to consider what they should motivate us to do. Various scriptures warn us that the end time events will come to pass suddenly and unexpectedly. God issued a warning that we should not be weighed down by the cares of this life, so that the day of Christ's return arrives when we are not prepared. So it is up to each of us to watch like a sentry on guard duty, and pray always that we may be accounted worthy to escape these things which will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. All of us need to take the warnings of the Bible seriously. We must be careful not to make the mistake of rejecting any of its teachings because they don't agree with our human reasoning, our opinions, our ideas, and our beliefs. Bible prophecy shows that unless mankind repents, earthquakes, along with other major calamities, will strike the earth in the not too distant future. God takes no pleasure in the suffering humans bring on themselves. Instead, He wants us to choose the way of happiness joy and abundance that He offers to those who seek to please Him and live His way of life. Where will Jesus return? The world desperately needs the return of Christ. But the Bible warns there will be conflicting messages about when and where He will return. Jesus explained that before His return, there would be false reports that He had already returned and was in some secret location. He warned in Matthew chapter 24, verse 23 through 26 at that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out, or here he is, in the inner rooms, do not believe it, the prophet Zechariah picks up the story. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as He fights on the day of battle. And on that day His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. The Mount of Olives was the location from which Jesus ascended to heaven after being resurrected from the grave and appearing to His disciples. Jesus will return to the same location from which He previously left the earth. The second coming of Jesus Christ will result in a dramatic change to the topography of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. We read of a great earthquake that destroys a tenth of the city and kills 7,000 people at the end of the sixth trumpet in Revelation. The prophet Zechariah prophesied that a great earthquake would split the Mount of Olives, which is located east of the Temple Mount, creating a new valley through the middle of it. These earthquakes will apparently destroy the present Temple Mount and require the building of a new one. The prophet Ezekiel was given a vision describing a new millennial temple in great detail. Jesus Christ is coming to set up the kingdom of God on the earth, and there will be a temple throughout his millennial rule on the earth. Christ's purpose will be to bring humanity to the knowledge of God, to repentance from its sinful ways, and to the path to eternal life. That way is available to those today who desire to know about it. You know what? What happened in the Temple Mount can be the cause of changes in this place. What do you think about rebuilding the Third Temple? Maybe right? People describe the complex known to Jews as Temple Mount and to Muslims as Haram al-Sharif is the most sensitive piece of real estate on the planet. It is certainly one of, if not the most contentious. More often than not, the focus is on the mosque, which has existed as a house of prayer albeit originally a small one, Muhammad's death. For some Palestinians and Muslims, there is a deep and abiding fear that Israel will reclaim the complex one day as the site of the Temple of Solomon and Herod. Jewish tradition states that it is at Temple Mount that a third and final temple will be built. 
The complex, however, is important for reasons other than the tangled conflict between two religions over land, legitimate claim, and lawful possession. The complex contains the very first monument of the Muslim faith, one that changed the very nature of art, perception, and architecture for the whole world. One of the certain facts about Jesus was that he was a Jew. He was a child of Jewish parents, brought up in a Jewish home, and reared among Jewish traditions. Throughout his life, Jesus lived among Jews, and his followers were Jews. No other Jew in history has rivaled Jesus in the magnitude of his influence. The words and deeds of Jesus the Jew have been and are an inspiration to countless millions of men and women. Strange, is it not, that Jews have given little attention to the life and teaching of this outstanding Jew. Yet this is true because the Christian followers of Jesus came to cherish beliefs about his life that no Jew could hold. Jesus was a Jew, not an alien intruder in once a century Palestine. Whatever else he was, he was a reformer of Jewish beliefs not an indiscriminate fault finder of them. For Jews, the significance of Jesus must be in his life, rather than his death, a life of faith in God. For Jews, not Jesus, but God alone is Lord. Yet an increasing number of Jews are proud that Jesus was born, lived and died a Jew. And I think those are the reasons why the Jews built the first and the second temple in Jerusalem. Yes, the temple in Jerusalem refers to the two religious structures that served as the central places of worship for Israelites and Jews on the modern-day Temple Mount in the old city of Jerusalem. According to the Hebrew Bible, the first temple refers to the Temple of Yahweh built in Jerusalem by King Solomon. That temple was destroyed by the Neo-Babylonians, which is a Mesopotamian power in 586 BCE. And it was part of the destruction, in fact, of the entire city. The city was razed, and this was a massive crisis, of course, for the people of Judah and for the city of Jerusalem in particular, because this was the house of their God. This is the one place where God had said, I have chosen to dwell here. And this is where proper worship, of course, took place. The second temple was among the great landmarks in Jewish history and was built on the Temple Mount site in Jerusalem. It was established after a rebuilding of the first temple which had been built by Solomon and destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BCE. The second temple was built in 516 BCE and it became the centerpiece of Jewish worship and cultural identity. The temple was destroyed in 70 CE by Roman forces, quelling a rebellion by Jews against Roman occupation. The destruction of the second temple was another important event in Jewish history that led to hundreds of years of Jewish diaspora. As the only standing structure of the temple, the western wall is now recognized as a holy site of Judaism. So do you think the third temple will be rebuilt? As for the return, the Jews themselves hold different views and believe in the rebuilding of the temple. Some religious groups held it as that there was a divine spoken prophecy about a third temple in the messianic era. However, all those views that support rebuilding to a large extent are symbolic and theological. Now standing on the site where the second temple is today considered very important in Islam and it is home to two of its major holy shrines, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Al-Aqsa Mosque itself is one of the three holiest sites in Islamic belief. Jews, they claim, have intentions to destroy Al-Aqsa so as to rebuild the temple, a claim that Dr. Israr Ahmed and other Islamic scholars often allege. These views are often mixed with wider geopolitical and religious tensions in the Middle East, most notable being the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Doctor, Ahmed argues that the Christians in general and the Jews in particular have captured the Christian world and succeeded in weakening the Muslim countries as part of his interpretation of global politics and religious dynamics. It has to be recognized that such statements are based on his personal opinions and interpretations of religious texts, and they need to be understood in this sense. It is worth mentioning that the situation in Jerusalem and on the Temple Mount is highly sensitive with complex religious and political elements. Any action of attempt that would be perceived as placing the Al-Aqsa Mosque or Dome of the Rock in jeopardy would most probably cause a serious escalation of the conflict. Israeli and Palestinian officials, as well as international bodies, usually try to keep the status quo at these religious sites. 
so that there is no conflict. The concept of the Third Temple in Jerusalem holds significant importance in Jewish eschatology. Reports indicate active preparations for the Temple's construction with the training of Levites, crafting of sacrificial instruments, and even the import of red heifers from Texas to Israel. These red heifers, if they remain without blemish, are believed to fulfill a crucial role in purification rituals necessary for the Temple. Netanyahu's controversial leadership in the Third Temple prophecy, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's leadership, has been criticized by figures like Avigdor Lieberman, who accused Netanyahu of leading Israel toward a Third Temple destruction. This criticism metaphorically refers to the historical destructions of the first two temples and echoes concerns about the current political direction in Israel. Increased Jewish presence on the Temple Mount during recent conflicts there has been a notable increase in the number of Jews visiting the Temple Mount, a site of immense religious significance to both Jews and Muslims. This rise in visits, especially during times of tension, signifies the deepening religious and nationalistic sentiments surrounding this contested sacred site. The Bible never makes a connection between the timing of the resurrection and the start of the Jerusalem Temple being built, except that the resurrection must occur before the start of tribulation. Because scripture states that by the midpoint of tribulation, the temple will be built and defiled by the Antichrist. Additionally, tribulation begins with a deceitful peace treaty between the Antichrist and the Jewish people, which could possibly initiate the building of the third temple. However, this is mere speculation. Marking the midpoint of tribulation, the Antichrist will compromise the peace agreement, taking a seat in the temple himself and calling himself God which in effect defiles the temple. The Antichrist will call himself a god and will take a seat in the temple 3.5 years into the seven years of tribulation, which must be rebuilt by the time of the Antichrist's appearance, and will rule the earth with the power of Satan until Christ's return. Furthermore, Paul says the specific identity of the Antichrist will not be revealed to the world until the restrainer is removed from the earth. The resurrection of the church takes place prior to the revealing of the Antichrist. Therefore, believers will not know the Antichrist's identity while we live on earth, but may see the beginning steps to fortify the Jerusalem temple. But again, this is not a prerequisite to the end times timeline. As we approach the end times, we will continue to see increased preparations made to ensure the rebuilding of the temple. We started in the late 1980s under the Temple Movement Project. Furthermore, the Temple Mount Faithful, an organization that has been trying to prepare Israeli society to accept and promote the rebuilding of the temple while making various temple-related items, most notably a portable altar for sacrifice, are earnestly forging avenues to obtain proper worship at the Temple Mount. As we eagerly wait for the arrival of the Messiah, the church body eagerly awaits the rapture which can happen at any time.